Archaeologists have uncovered coffins buried more than two and a half thousand years ago in Egypt. We are announcing today that there are 59 coffins out of the shaft plus an unknown number of coffins. You might believe you're well versed in Egyptian mummies after watching Hollywood's portrayal in movies like The Mummy or even visiting the Egyptian pyramids last Christmas. However, recent revelations from scientists about a 2,500-year-old mummy could challenge those beliefs. Hollywood's depiction may not align with the reality of ancient Egyptian practices. Be amazed as we explore the real stories behind these ancient artifacts and the mysteries they hold within their preserved remains. Join us as we delve into the truth behind Egyptian mummies, uncovering secrets that Hollywood never dared to show. A ridiculous fairy tale that turned out to be true. In the fall of 2020, Egypt's Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities told a ridiculous story that was deemed laughable. Everyone thought it was a joke, even the experts, till they pulled out something that made them gasp in awe and then unimaginable excitement. It was not about what they found, it was the impossible mystery of where they found it. They had discovered 59 wooden coffins placed neatly in burial wells in Saqqara's archaeology area. I'm very proud that this discovery of today with 59 wooden coffins in perfect condition of preservation. A coffin was not what anyone wanted to mess with, but these wooden structures were different. They were ancient. Listen, Molly. Tell me. I'm very happy, I'm very proud of this discovery. Now, even wood decays when it has been abandoned for a long time. So how did the coffins stay the way they were created over the centuries? What kind of wood were they built from? The most bizarre discovery was that the coffins were found in their original color. How? So they went to the east, they said, ah, yeah, this is the beginning of one out of 18 wooden coffins. Even humans grow old. All the mummies inside the sarcophagi were bound neatly. They looked as if they had been laid to rest the previous day. No chemical reaction, no air inside, nothing. That's why it's all in perfect condition of preservation. Saqqara is a vast ancient burial ground in Egypt that served as the necropolis of the ancient city of Memphis. These mummies were priests and high officials who were well respected in the society. One can say that they were part of the elite who controlled the affairs of the Egyptians. So, they were buried in well-structured graves and preserved. According to scientists, the mummies lived and died in the 26th dynasty, which was 330 BC. Archaeologists and researchers have dug up about 60 sarcophagi, and they are about to dig up more. Archaeologists had dug up about 30 sarcophagi earlier where they found 28 statues of the ancient Egyptian god, Ptah. Memphis was believed to be under the protection of the god, Ptah, the patron of craftsmen. Along with the statues of Ptah, the scientists also found a 35-centimeter statue of the deity Nefertem, who was viewed as the son of Ptah. All of these findings were brilliant. It was nothing like anybody had ever seen before but something else was way more bizarre and rich. Discovering the wealthiest mummy. Researchers and Egyptologists like Dr. Zahi Hawass, who have spent decades studying the mysteries of the underground, were excited to go on the excavation trip. I stuck my head in to see what was in the sarcophagus. Then I saw it. Now, uh, in Saqqara, we made major important discoveries. As Gis al Mudir, I told you, as my dream, is to discover. The beautiful mummy of a man completely covered in gold, Hawass exclaimed, like a little boy who just got a bicycle. He was in awe. The researchers had finished documenting their findings about the 59 mummies that were dug up in Saqqara. Then they decided to research further. Still in Memphis, they came about another find, but this one looked older. It had probably stayed at least a millennium more than the 59 mummies found in Saqqara. The mummy was decorated with gold lead and was at least 4,300 years old. It was said to be the oldest known mummy wrapped in layers of gold. Some reports had named it the oldest mummy in the world. But Hawass made it clear that it was the oldest known gold mummy. The oldest mummy was buried before the time of the pharaohs. 
The body was placed in an embryo-like position in an underground tomb and is said to have been around 6,000 years old. Looking at the gold mummy, the sparkling remains should tell you the kind of person the deceased was. There was a hydrophilic inscription on the sarcophagus remains. In addition to the layers of gold around him, the mummy wore a band on his head and a bracelet on his chest, signifying that he was a man of great wealth. He was buried in a delectable barrel with his name inscribed on it. But there was something else, something unbelievable in our world today. This particular mummy was not bandaged with burial clothes like the other 59 that were dug up. His bracelet was like a belt-enlarged necklace. He was also found with a tunic and a belt. This was the first of his kind. How big was he in the Egyptian kingdom? Could he have been a grand commander in his time? Why did the people decide to preserve him like the way he lived when he was alive? Several other tombs were also discovered at the site. According to a statement from Hawass on social media, they belonged to a priest named Kanum Jedef, a judge and writer named Fetek, and a priest who may have been named Messi. Just like the 4,300-year-old grave, the researchers found another grave with another name inscribed on it. This one seemed like a commander in the army of the pharaoh Umyas, who probably resigned between 2380 and 2350 BC. Aside from the hieroglyphics that put out this information, his grace was like an artwork. Scenes from his everyday life were carved on his tomb. In one painting, five huge jugs were sitting on his table. Other carvings were also drafted in elongated proportions, these paintings are helping generational researchers understand the dynamics and development of the Egyptian kingdom over the centuries. Dynamics and development are good, but some things are not just logical to the common man. Like how the Egyptians preserved a fetus inside a mummy for thousands of years. The fascinating pregnant mummy. In all the years of generational research of Egypt and their ancient kingdom, nothing like this had been seen. It was too great of a mystery to the common mind. It makes you wonder if the ancient world was more advanced than our generation, even without the use of technology. An Egyptian mummy buried for centuries still held a mind-boggling mystery to researchers. Who was she, and why was everything about her preserved? Researchers found the remains of a woman who died about 2,000 years ago in the ancient Egyptian Theban community. This mummy had been handed to researchers at the University of Warsaw in 1826, and they could only deduce a few things. But they did not notice what would be found about 200 years later. In 2018, another group of researchers studied the Warsaw mummy, and they decided to carry out a computer tomography examination to determine what her inside looked like after so many years. What they found did not only shock them, it threw them off balance. It could not be real. She had lived for centuries. How could any of it be real? According to the results of her CT scan, the lady mummy was carrying a child under her heart at the time of her death. The baby was also mummified in her womb. Over the years, researchers have been able to solve a few mysteries about the pregnant mummy. They first discovered the probable cause of her death and a little bit about why the baby was preserved. Prior research on her body had been conducted using x-rays, but they failed to show the fetus because its bones had mineralized. They discovered that the woman must have died due to a terminal disease that is like a canker worm in the modern world. She likely died of cancer. When conducting a series of CT scans and x-rays, researchers discovered significant changes in the bones of her skull and face. These changes are symptoms of nasopharyngeal cancer, which is a rare kind of cancer. The pregnant mummy had also been very carefully mummified and adorned with amulets. They also estimated her age at between 20 and 30 years old when she died, and the fetus was between 26 and 30 weeks along. But how were the Egyptians able to preserve the fetus? The researchers discovered two common denominators of preservation, acid, and salt in the mummy's body, and they deduced that she did not die at childbirth. They also found the mummy had been preserved with natron, a type of salt found in dry lake beds. When used to mummify a corpse, it dries out the body and also works as a disinfectant, preventing bacteria from eating the remains. 
During decomposition immediately after the death of the expecting mother, the acidification of the tissues in the mother took place. While the concentration of ammonia gas and formic acid rose in the body, the pH fell. When the woman died, the allocation of sodium bicarbonate to her body halted rapid decomposition and the fetus remained in the untouched uterus. And because the womb remained hermetically sealed, the fetus pickled, preserving it along with its mother for over 2,000 years. But something still baffled the researchers. When they scanned her body, all other organs were gone and they were most likely removed. But why did the people who buried the mummy decide to leave the fetus in her? Were they scared? Was it some kind of ancient tradition? It is not surprising to see the preservation of an ancient human, as part of Albert Einstein was preserved for research purposes. But the word strange cannot even begin to describe what the researchers found when they discovered a mass grave. A giant grave of crocodiles. It is common knowledge that there were questionable ancient laws practiced by our ancestors. The Egyptians, in particular, practiced a solid animal cult. They worshipped and viewed different animals as sacred. And when these animals passed away, many of them were mummified and buried with the honor bestowed upon a leader. But one animal that stood out in ancient Egypt was the crocodile. The ancient Egyptians held the crocodile in high esteem. They were revered in a ritual that likely honored Sobek, a fertility deity worshipped in ancient Egypt. The crocodile has played an important role in Egyptian culture for thousands of years. In addition to being linked to a deity, it was a food source, and parts of the animal, like its fat, were used as medicine to treat body pains, stiffness, and even balding. In another excavation bout, researchers made a shocking discovery in a necropolis at Kobat al-Hawa, on the Nile's west bank, they discovered a mass crocodile grave. Upon closer inspection, they learned that the crocodiles had been preserved differently from most of their tomb specifics. Mummified animals, including ibises, cats, and baboons, are relatively common finds in Egyptian tombs. Other mummified crocodile remains have been dug up, but most have been juveniles or hatchlings, but these were huge and in great shape. These crocodiles were not broken, so what did they preserve them with? Most of the time I'm dealing with fragments, with broken things, said Bea de Coupere, an archaeozoologist at the Royal Belgian Institute of Natural Sciences and a co-author of the study. To hear you have ten crocodiles in a tomb, that's special. These crocodiles did not undergo the major processes of mummification, so how did their bones and shells hold together for centuries? The reptiles were between 1.8 and 3.5 meters long, and they appeared to be two different species, the Nile crocodile and the West African crocodile. Of the ten mummified adult crocodile remains found, five were just heads, and the other five were in varying states of completion, but one, at over seven feet long, was nearly complete. They appeared to have been buried in sand pits first for natural preservation, before they were excavated and mummified, which the researchers proposed happened before the Ptolemaic period, which lasted between 332 BC and 30 BC. But something is amiss. The Egyptians had an ancient tradition where they did not wait for their mummies to die a natural death before mummification. However, when the researchers took a closer look at the crocodiles, there was no indication of a violent injury on their bodies. This discovery made them conclude that the crocodiles were probably killed by non-violent techniques like drowning, suffocation, or prolonged sunbathing. A few ropes found around some of the crocodiles indicated that they were probably tied up and died of dehydration and starvation before they were mummified. But if the Egyptians held their crocodiles in high esteem, why did they sacrifice them? They were surely sacrificed for a purpose, but were they trying to appease Sobek? Was it a great ask? Bandaging corpses in linen was a common practice for mummification, but the researchers discovered only fragments of linen that had been eaten by insects. These discoveries allowed the researchers to study the mummies at the excavation site. This one-of-a-kind discovery gives us new insights into the relationship between people and the Kubat al-Hawa necropolis. From the first burials over 4,000 years ago, 
to the present day. They also present another angle into ancient Egyptian religion and the treatment of these animals as offerings. It is one thing to discover new rules about ancient religion, but there is a certain level of excitement when you stumble across a shining bag of buried treasures. Wait, are you allowed to take it home? A huge discovery of abundant treasures. Recently, an Egyptian-Japanese research team found an ancient tomb that had been charged into the rocks about 4,500 years ago in Saqqara, situated approximately 20 miles south of Cairo. Inside the tomb, they found multiple treasures that had been playing dormant for thousands of years. The tomb, dating back between 2649 and 2150 BC, featured multiple graves and artifacts that span different historical periods. How did new dynasties know about the tomb and why did they deem it fit as a house for treasures? From a burial site for a small child dating back to the second dynasty from 2890 to 2686 BC to a well-preserved alabaster box found in a coffin from the 18th dynasty, the international research team found a myriad of treasures. Additionally, two terracotta statues portraying the ancient Egyptian goddess Isis, initially associated with funerary practices, and the child deity Harpocrates, known as the god of silence and secrets during the Ptolemaic periods, were uncovered. The researcher did not know which one to study first, and excitement coursed through them. Saqqara is a heritage site, and is home to more than a dozen pyramids, including the famous Giza pyramids, as well as smaller pyramids at Abu Sir, Dashur, and Abu Ruwaish. In the tomb, the international researchers also discovered the remains of a person, sitting next to a strange, colorful mask, nothing like they had seen before. Further findings included a stela, a carved stone slab, bearing an inscription identifying it as belonging to a man named Heroides, various amulets, and ostraca, which means pieces of broken pottery. In all of these discoveries, the common mystery remains that the findings came from different eras. This means that the burial ground for children had been for centuries before the corpse with the alabaster box. It also means that whoever put the box there was not afraid to go into a tomb. Although ancient Egypt houses a huge array of history, a recent discovery is making us doubt everything we thought we knew. Were the pyramids built as a monument, or were the results of the reign of a brutal empire and what they represented? They took care of their enemies in a beastical manner, and they probably gloried in it as they wrote hieroglyphs of their daily life. But something was certain. The ancient Egyptians were top engineers, and they probably had technology that the modern world could only dream of because of some of their masterpieces. But shouldn't they use their masterpieces to develop the world? Even with their monuments, the pharaohs also had a darker side. Archaeologists recently discovered a bizarre trophy cult that sends shivers down our spine. The researchers discovered three pits within a courtyard in front of the throne room of a 15th dynasty between 1640 and 1530 BC Hyksos Palace at Avaris and Tel El Daba in northeastern Egypt. However, these pits did not contain ancient treasures or unique monuments. The contents were more horrifying. These pits contained 12 severed right hands as part of a horrifying trophy-taking practice that was prominent in the ancient empire. Although the practice of placing severed hands is documented in tomb inscriptions and temple reliefs dating back to the New Kingdom, this discovery was the first analysis with physical evidence. The Hyksos were a group of foreign kings who ruled the Egyptian dynasty during the Second Intermediate Period. Anatomical markers indicate that the hands belong to at least 12 adults, 11 of whom are male and one of whom is female. However, it is hard to determine if the amputations were performed before or after their deaths. Only six of the discovered hands have intact proximal row carpal bones, and no signs of cut marks or any soft tissue removal are present, which is strange. One technique for neatly severing a hand was to cut the joint capsule and open it by cutting out the tendons. That way, they would have done a neat job, but they needed to be very careful. Why did the Egyptians decide to neatly cut only six of the found victims? Was their crime any different from the others? The custom of severing an enemy's right hand appears to have been brought to Egypt by the Hyksos, according to researchers, 
even though the hands cannot be directly linked to a particular ethnic or cultural group, the likelihood that the hands were parts of defeated enemies is high. Evidence shows that severed hands were prepared and arranged for presentation in a public ceremony in the Pharaoh's palace. Cutting off the right hand, in particular, would not only have made counting victims easier, but it would also have served the symbolic purpose of removing an enemy's strength. Or maybe Pharaoh's soldiers were made to put off these hands as a sign of loyalty and a hierarchy test. But why did Pharaoh decide to bury these hands in front of the throne room? Was the site supposed to serve as a warning for potential enemies? As more dark revelations of the Egyptian dynasty began to unfold, it became clear that not all discoveries were exciting. Scientists found another tomb, but this one carried an air of darkness. It was a massive grave that would tell the evil nature of the ancient Egyptian kingdom practices. The cruel king who mutilated hundreds of people. In archaeology and Egyptology research, there have been debates about kings, land discoveries, and underground discoveries. But one thing was certain. He was the longest reigning king of the Egyptian first dynasty. When Jet ascended the throne, he was not going to relinquish it for another 54 years. He was going to take his time, but his reign was cut shut because he died. And when he was laid to rest, he did not rest alone. When researchers discovered the site, they were shocked to find over 300 secondary burials on the site. But they also concluded that many were unrelated, which led them to believe that the number of deaths was higher. So, they estimated that the Pharaoh Dujet was sent into the afterlife, along with 580 people who were probably servants and retainers. But why did the Pharaoh practice these mass killings? It was speculated that the ancient Egyptians believed that these masses were his subjects forever, and death was not the end. So they accompanied him to serve him in the life beyond. Maybe the king also wanted to display his drunkenness for power, even in his death, that he ordered their killings. The speculations are not far-fetched because rulers were seen as gods by their subjects at the time. It is also possible that the servants voluntarily allowed themselves to be killed because they believed that it was for a good cause. The bodies that were found consisted of young men and women who were servants, concubines, and wives. There are also theories that the victims were chosen from the ranks of other elite families in a bid to unite the group and strengthen social ties. Some of the people allegedly believed that the sacrifice of servants would bring prosperity to Egypt, but to the victims, it was not the number of bodies. It was the way they were killed. They were allowed their last breath in the most painful and terrifying techniques. They were either strangled, poisoned, their throats slashed, or buried alive. All they would probably remember throughout eternity is the pain of their last moments. Jet conducted expeditions beyond Egypt, with evidence of his travels through the Arabian desert discovered along the route leading to the Red Sea. Notable advancements in art and craftsmanship occurred during his rule. If you are sensitive to gross-looking things and you don't want to struggle with food for the next few days, maybe you should sit this one out. You cannot prepare enough for the horrifying discovery we are about to share with you. A foul broth in a giant granite sarcophagus. A few years ago, archaeologists discovered a bizarre sarcophagus weighing about 30 tons under a house in Alexandria. Many scientists wanted it to be the tomb of Alexander the Great, probably because of the size. Many scientists and non-scientists have tried to search for this tomb in many places. Late Professor Fawzi al-Fakharani had announced that the tomb of Alexander the Great was in the neighborhood of the Roman cemeteries in the area of al-Shatbi, where they even dug, but the tomb was not found. So when archaeologists dug up this large sarcophagus found under a house in Alexandria, they thought they found their tomb. Everything matched, even the name. The rumors increased when the Ministry of Antiquities delayed opening the black sarcophagus without explanation. Many people became increasingly scared of them opening. Could it be that they would unleash a curse upon the world? Maybe they should just bury the coffin and let the world forget that they ever found anything. But the truth was that the 30-ton coffin was very deep in a small place that needed huge procedures and arrangements 
to extract it safely from the surrounding underground water. When they successfully pulled the large coffin away from its surroundings, they quickly found out that the coffin did not belong to Alexander the Great or any Ptolemaic or Roman. But as the world anticipated the results of the black box in Alexandria, they would watch in imaginative horror as the researchers stepped back from the box after slightly opening it. But it was not because of a demonic spell that they were about to release. It was more of a disgusting smell that emanated from the box as it was opened. When they opened the box, they discovered a gross decomposing moisture of human remains and skeletons. Imagine stumbling upon a concentrated soup of decomposing human body parts that have been buried for centuries. Yeah, they shouldn't have dug up anything in the first place. Some things are best left in the dark. In light of the discovery, the researchers got very strange requests from certain individuals. Some asked to drink a glass of the ancient musical broth because they believed that it contained mystical powers. How would you even get the glass to your mouth? Wouldn't you die from the stench before you get it into your mouth? However, further analysis of the broth revealed that the ancient soup was not any kind of mystical portion, but a moisture of wastewater and the human body that sipped into the cracks of the big sarcophagus over time. I can bet that if it was determined that it was the broth of the body of Alexander the Great and wastewater, some people would try to drink it. But whatever it was, the giant box should have been left sleeping. Along with the sewage, archaeologists found the remains of three skeletons inside the sarcophagus. These may be those of soldiers, Egypt's Antiquities Ministry said in a statement. Analysis of the skeletal remains is still ongoing, but initial results suggest that one of the individuals found in the sarcophagus suffered a blow from an arrow. No ancient artifact was found with the bodies or in the black box, so maybe the bodies were not of Egyptian descent. Maybe they were foreign soldiers. The sarcophagus, which is nearly 9 feet long, 5 feet wide, and 6 feet tall, is about 2.7 by 1.5 by 1.8 meters. It was the largest found in Alexandria and was discovered with a thick layer of mortar covering much of it. This can only suggest that it was the first time the box was dug up after it was buried. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and make sure to check all our interesting video content.